It's a mysterious moonlit night in deepest, darkest Northumbria. Tonight, pop rockers McFly are going to put their bravery to the test with ghost hunter extraordinaire Yvette Fielding. Ah! Yvette is setting McFly a heart-stopping task to last a whole night exploring some of Northumbria's most terrifying locations. How will they cope with the terror? I'm it. Absolutely it. Can they last to the end of the night? Can you maybe leave me and Dougie together? No. Please. And will they ever be the same again? Seven years ghost hunting experience, Yvette Fielding is an expert at stalking spirits. She's setting McFly a challenge where their valour and values will be put to the test. I'm not going at the back. I'm a woman. You're a bunch of rockers. I go on, mate. Go on. <laughs> Yvette's not alone on her quest to test the nerve of these poor souls. Professor of Psychology Geoffrey Beatty will be on hand to determine the band's mindset as the fear unfolds and offer sanctuary should McFly feel the need to flee. I'm interested in how fear is going to affect them, both as individuals and as a group. I'm fascinated by the way that fear changes everything. It changes how you feel inside, changes what you see and what you hear. It can even affect how you feel about yourself. Oh, oh that's it. Right, I don't know, let's just go, man. Dude, please! Now, fear may start off inside, but it soon leaks out and can influence everyone around you. And of course, watching your friends succumb to fear can be a truly terrifying experience. McFly's ghost-busting outfits may make them laugh, but Yvette is not impressed. You've got to be joking. Get in! She knows their journey tonight will be far from comical. What are you doing? Are you going to go? Oh, get in! <laughs> <laughs> Having finally made it into the back of the cab, the band are being driven towards a heart-stopping task. Yvette is taking McFly to three reputedly haunted locations. First up is Killhope Mine, said to be home to the poor souls, both young and old, who lost their lives labouring within its cavernous tunnel system. Malevolent spirits have been reported in its dark, damp recesses. Also on tonight's ghostly agenda is Killhope Woods. The vastness of this forbidding forest is allegedly the scene of mysterious disappearances. The ghosts of which are said to be heard emitting guttural screams that rage through the trees. Tonight's final location is set deep in the Northumbrian countryside. This 13th century border castle is reputedly haunted by at least four different ghosts. They're all set to roam its historic corridors and dungeons. But how do the boys feel about the task ahead? It will be very interesting to see how we all, we all react tonight. I think it's, uh, it's certain that I'm going to cack my pants a lot. Um, at the minute, I'm quite relaxed. Um, but I'm sure as, as me and the lads get in a dark room, we'll start being, uh, being stupid and screaming. Get me out of here! I don't know, I'm very, uh, I'm very paranoid that um, I'm going to lose my mind and be scarred for the rest of my life. There's no way I'm going back in, in the, the place where the bloke bit his own arm off. Vet is, um, she's a very strange young lady. She's lovely, but she's also got a slightly sort of freaky look in her eye. Even if nothing happens, it's going to be scary enough just walking around with her for a couple of hours. It's a nice summer's day. Yeah. I want my mum and my hot water bottle. <laughs> You're quite scary. Yeah. <laughs> Who, me? That yeah. Guy. All right. Do you live in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> McFly might be laughing now, but tonight's first location will soon wipe the smile from their faces. Kilhope Mine dates back to 1853 
and at its peak was one of the richest lead mines in the British Isles. A 200 metre tunnel, at times one foot deep in water, cuts into the hillside. It closed in 1910, but was opened briefly during the First World War. Paranormal activity is said to be rife in these tunnels, manifesting as the ghost of an angry miner. As well as strange lights appearing, curious noises and the voices of children are regularly reported. And it is down these very tunnels that Yvette is going to take McFly. Along with the, the other guys, I reckon I'll be pretty open about the way I'm feeling. Um, like if I'm scared, you'll know I'm scared. I'm not going to try and be cool and try and pretend that I'm not scared. <laughs> you might see a bit of screaming, so hopefully not too much. There's a lot of poltergeist activity. There's a lot of ghostly presence has been witnessed down there. All right, so just be really vigilant. Um, think about where you're going. It's very dark as well, so make sure that you have these lamps on. You turn, we, at one point, we'll turn them all off, just and you won't be able to see a hand in front of your face. Everybody ready? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Follow. Go. Follow us all. Let's go. this particular area. There's actually a level 120 feet below um, here and that would fill up with water but because this was the only drainage level this wheel was working a pump which is further down there that would extract water from the level below. There would be maintenance but if they didn't turn the wheel off they could often get caught in the wheel and it would take them round and shred them and cut them up into pieces. So can you imagine the screams that would have been heard from that? Getting your body caught in that, they would have been horrific. Hey guys, come on then. As Yvette and the boys make their way deeper into the mine, they begin to realise they may not be totally alone. Did you just hear kids? I just said kids, yeah. Do you hear that? Could the noises being heard be coming from the next area, the working stope? It is said this place is haunted by the ghosts of children. Now, I happen to know that this particular area is, is very prevalent with, with the spirits of children, particularly one, a little boy, aged between 11 and 12, so we're told, and they normally give um, school children tours around here, and they counted 12 children in, but when they were walking around, the children were actually saying, you know, who's this other child? And they were kept counting. They kept coming up with 13, and they couldn't quite work out what was going on. When they left, there was 12 children. This is an area that, you know, we must investigate, definitely. Now, I think it's a good time for us to go to night vision. You up for it? Definitely. Let's do it. Above ground, watching events from the safety of the taxi is Professor of Psychology, Jeff Beatty. Some locations in my view are just naturally scary and I think an underground mine is one of them. Because I think when people get frightened they're always looking out for a way of escaping from the situation. And I think the problem is once you start going underground you know that escape is going to be that much more difficult. I think that's why it's kind of intrinsically frightening. And also of course going underground is a bit like being buried. It's got lots of those kind of connotations associated with it. With the torches extinguished it's not just the light that has disappeared. McFly's sense of chivalry also seems to have gone missing. I don't leave me at the bloody back. You're a man. You go? Get out of it. Yvette leads the band down through the rest of the tunnel system, where she hopes to make contact with the spirits who reside here. Oh, God. Is anybody here? Is there any spirit people that want to talk to us? Can you please make a noise? <gasps> Where did that come from? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Mm. Call out one of you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Harry. 
Come on, Harry. You're at the front there, come on. Just say if that's you, do it again. Go on. <gasps> you can. Uh, hello? Say, if that was you, do it again. If that was you, do it again. Let's go right in. You ready? Yeah, first mate. Joint front. <laughs> right behind you. Wait a minute. You ready? Yeah. You alright? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah good, yeah. Let's the shut button. the door behind us, you know, as we go in. Yeah? Right. If there's anybody here, if there's any spirit people that want to talk to us, can you please make a noise? Make a loud bang or throw something? Did you hear that? Did you hear it? Hear what? I just heard like a... Ask again. If there's anybody here, if there's any children here, please don't be frightened. We don't mean you any harm. If there's a ghost of a little boy here, the spirit of a little boy, please come and talk to us. Shh. Yeah, love. Who's going to go first? Once again, McFly is showing their true metal. Hey, look at you trying running out! Bloody hell! And Dougie <laughs> wishes he was elsewhere. My turn. Dude, you're not going to... No, no, no. Oh. You don't want to go at the back? Hell no, hell no. Come on, do you not want to go at the back? No, no, no. I'm not going at the back. I'm a woman, for Christ's sake. Excuse me, you're a bunch of rockers. Oh, go on, mate, go on. Ah! Oh, no, 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 Calm down, I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm going to stop. Oh, I'm going to Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. There's knocking. There's knocking. <laughs> no, 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 no. Shh. Dougie, Dougie, Dougie listen to me. Do you want? Do you want? Do you want to go? Dougie, come on, stay. You don't have to stay, Dougie. If you oh, want. Okay, okay, I'll stay. In there. <laughs> that was a loud bang. That one. They're pretty keyed up to begin with here, and now there's been a loud noise in the mine. Now it is an old mine, so there are going to be lots of knocks all the time. But when you're in that psychological state, that kind of noise might just be enough to set you off. And look at the effects on Dougie. He just wanted to flee, he just wanted to get out of there. But look at the others trying to reassure him, and listen to the tone of Harry's voice. It's almost as if he's terrified of Dougie leaving. It's as if the group's only strong if the weakest member is still there. If that was you that made that banging noise, do it again. You're all huddled together. Yeah. Look at you. I'm myself. I don't want to move. Let's keep walking. This place sucks, man. Oh, please. Now, listen, listen, listen. Let's go in tandem, all right? Two on two. Two on two. But let's do our you two face the back. Do you want to go in front of me? Don't, you two. In the middle. You two face the back and keep your backs to us and we'll be forward. Okay, let's do it. Do you want to go in the middle? And you can stay with us, right? No. We're just walking back. I'll lead you if you like. I'll lead you if you like, all right? I'll lead you. All right? Happy? Right. Coming up, Yvette ups the ante. Let's split up. No. No. We've got to split up. Yeah? I've mean, okay. seen myself, dude. Harry has a stroke of bad luck. Oh! What the f? Oh, sorry. Oh, 
something just touched my leg. And terror rips through Kill Hope Mine. <laughs> Pop Punk's McFly have swapped a cosy night in, tuning their instruments, for a night ghost hunting with Yvette Fielding. She has challenged the boys to last one whole night in three of Northumbria's most haunted locations. McFly are exploring Killhope Mine, where Yvette has thrown the band straight in at the deep end by making the Pop Punksters search for spirits in the subterranean caverns. A large bang scared the band senseless, and Dougie threatened to leave, but Harry persuaded him to stay. Okay, okay, just calm down. Just calm down. With the band clearly terrified, Yvette leads them further down into the heart of the darkness, and it's not long before the demons within this underground hell are reappearing. Come on, if there's anybody here, I've asked you to give us a sign. <laughs> Did you hear that? <gasps> I swear to God, I've just seen something right in front of us. I swear to God, it was by the door. Shh. What? Oh. Harry, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Dougie? Yeah, he's good. Where are you, Dougie? You're not happy, are you? Yeah, this sucks. Dark in that room. My torch is so. Does anybody want to ask out? Or are you, are you embarrassed to ask out? Be honest. No, I don't want to. Why don't you? Don't want to marry my voice. You don't know what? I don't want to. Why? Someone else can. Why don't you want to? I don't know. You do it. Don't you want to call out? Don't you right? No. Is there anybody there? Hello? With the spirit seemingly gone to ground, Yvette suggests widening the search. Let's split up. No. No. We've got to split up. Um. Between the two. I'll tell okay, you. I'll go with Tom. You three go together. Okay. Tom, you up first. All right. Yeah. I'll be absolutely okay. myself, dude. Okay, me and you. Come on then. All right. Yeah. All right. Why don't you guys go down? What? Nothing. I'm just taking a deep breath. Okay. Why don't you guys go down and do a left down the coffin run? Okay. Yeah. We'll wait here, and we'll go right up to the top there. Turn round, come back, and just follow our noses. If you get into any trouble, you just call out. Promise? Right, we can't find you, should we just go back? Okay, no, we have out. to find each other. That's the, we've got to find each other. No one wants to go without the other lot, all right? But that's the deal, okay? That's so the deal. Gonna, you're not going to no. go and leave me and Harry in it? Jesus, no, God's sake. No way. No so one's allowed to do it. So just call out, yeah? Yeah. Right, I'll start at the front. You two stay together, all right? Makes you feel happy. Hold on to me. While Yvette takes Danny and Dougie back towards the wheel room, Harry and Tom venture down the mine's most claustrophobic tunnel, the coffin level. Right, Harry, do the link. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, we should right. go like that way, that way. Look, let's just link, let's just go together so we're okay. at the same time. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate not being able to see behind me. That's a good idea, wait. Stand like this, that's a good idea. <laughs> Looking forward and back. Yeah. Okay, right, like, let's stay in here for a sec. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was scary, was that? No. Dude, did you f I, I my whole voice just went hot on oh. that bang. Yeah. Mate, let's not each other up. Mate. What? No, if anything happens. No, but if anything happens, me and you're gonna ourselves. You alright? Deep breaths. You Deep breaths. Harry is hoping that Yvette's pursuit of the spirits will mean that he and Tom will be spared any ghostly visits. <laughs> At least we haven't got a hair. Oh my god, mate. Right. Yeah, I'll go first if you want. No, I just. You just go first, no, I'll come around, okay? 
Mate, come on, come with me. Alright, okay. I'm right here, huh? Okay. Do you want me to go first? No. Come on. Okay. You alright? Yeah, man, just shivers. <laughs> come on. <laughs> shivers. I can hear voices. Eh? Voices from where? Can you hear that, look? Mm. Huh? Mm. It's the way out, right? There's no chance. No chance. No. Realising that the sounds they are hearing are in fact coming from their fellow band members in the adjacent corridor, Harry and Tom devise a sneaky plan. Make a noise. Give us a sign that you're here. Oh. Did you hear that? Oh. That's at the door. No, no, that's at the door. Oh, that's it. Right, no, no, okay, this is it. No, let's just go, man. This is Dude. ridiculous. Please! What the f? What the f? The f? Off! No, guys, let's go, let's go. No, let's no, 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 I, no. I need to find. No, I need to check. Guys, guys! <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> was that you? What? What was that? Was that you knocking on the door? No. <laughs> <laughs> Making sense of Harry and Tom's cruel trick is Professor Geoffrey Beattie. The boys at this stage are really pretty frightened and Tom and Harry have just played a pretty nasty prank on the other two. So what's the psychology of that? I think Tom and Harry are fed up with being the victims here. Fed up with being told off by a vet. So I think they've wanted to take some power back to themselves. And they've got that power back by playing this kind of trick on their two friends. It might seem funny at the time, but I don't think their two friends find it funny in the slightest. It's all Harry's idea, I should say. It's his idea. It's tight. It's with down, so. It's weird, what's up there? Yeah? Nothing. Did you not guys get anything? No, we just banged. We did walk to the brisk walk. Prank over and differences buried, the band regroup, and Yvette takes the boys toward the exit. But it's not a smooth path to salvation. Uh, guys. What? <gasps> what, Tom? Uh, I just said it. Like, I what, heard it. I, I heard said it. what we were doing on the door. Oh. Shh. Don't think that's your helmet, no. Harry. Yeah. No, I heard it. It was literally behind, like, there, but not what we did on that door. Check it out. See, there's someone on the other side of the door. No, I, didn't, I heard it though. Did you hear that? Yeah. What? 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 Yeah, me too. I thought You're it was joking. You. No. I really heard that. Just what, what, what was it? We just oh. did that one. Who did that noise then? Did you just go, Ugh. Did you not hear it? It was really soft, but it was like a. Ugh. Should we have that one? Somebody else want to go first? One of these brave men? Oh god, really? What's that? Yeah. I'll go first. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I'll stay there. What the f***? What? Something just touched my leg. What? No. Harry being touched proves to be the final straw. Uh, does someone mind if I don't get lost? Do we go? Do we go? Go, 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 go. Wait, wait! Having cleared the mine, McFly take respite in the safety of the taxi with Jeffrey Beatty. So, well, how was the mine? It's uh, very scary. I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was. Quite, I think it's most scared I've, I've been you, ever. The anticipation of waiting for something to happen as well was scary. Just the, oh, oh, you know. And I, but I really wanted to either be see something or touch something. But the bangs and noises were always scary. Yeah. Anyway. It wasn't nice. Uh, no, it was fun. It was just so spooky, you know, it was dark, it was, all the ceilings were low. There was this massive bang, and it couldn't have been anyone like throwing something, it was just like, this massive bang. Ugh. Oh, go on, mate, go on. 
and it and then I like I panicked and sort of like ran into a wall, cut my lip, and then my helmet fell off and flowed down the stream, and I was just like, <laughs> I, I wanted to run, but I, oh god, man, it was horrible. McFly may be laughing about the mine now, but unfortunately for them, Yvette is about to crank the fear factor right up. Don't get cocky. Do not get cocky. You don't know what might be behind you. She's taking the band to the lodging shop. This small room would have been home to up to 40 men and boys, all sleeping in cramped, damp conditions. Disease was rife and many died here. But do their spirits still linger? It was the presence of a very grumpy, not particularly very nice male presence in here. Um, he's been in here all day and apparently he's here now. So I think what we should do is do a seance. Anybody here, if there's a spirit person here in this room with us now, please can you knock? You hear that knocking? Can you knock twice, please? Okay. Are you male? If you're male, can you knock twice? Okay. Did you work here? Okay. Do you mean us harm? Can you come amongst us? Come into the centre of the table. Can you touch one of us? Move the table. Knock on the table. Let us know that you're here and that you're amongst us. We don't mean you any harm. James, if you're here, come on, please come forward. Give us some evidence. Let us know that you're around. Did you die here? Did you die here? Did you die in the mine? I'm going to throw a marble. I'm going to throw it into that corner of the room over there, OK? I'm going to throw something to you. Can you throw it back? Throw it back. Throw something back. right on the edge of the table like this, like you're playing the piano so they're up like this. Okay. If you can hear me, please can you move this table? If you want us to leave, Jimmy, if that's your name, please move this table. Oh. Now I need to know if that was the marble that's come back. Listen to that tapping. Oh. That's come right under the table, hasn't it? Touch my boot. It touched my boot. Did it? Did it touch your boot? Yeah. Well, when you said it hit your chair before, it hit mine. Did it hit well. the top of your boot? Yeah. It rolled down the top of your boot. It hit. Yeah. It hit Did the top. It? Of, it hit the top of my boot. What? Left boot? Right boot. Hit the top of my boot and rolled down. <gasps> and it was only one marble. It felt like it hit me on the top of my my right boot as well. Okay. But that just. It couldn't have rolled. We heard it though. You've gone very quiet, all of you. <laughs> I'm just I'm waiting. I'm really on. listening, yeah. Let's move on. Mm. Where I'm going to take you now, I think it's going to be a little bit scary. Quite a lot scary. Coming up, Yvette cranks up the pressure on an already fragile McFly. Two of you are going to be in one tent, and one of you is going to spend some time on your own here. Oh, no. Why? Harry states the obvious. There's no tent in the middle of the woods. Anyone would And Danny remembers he's a celebrity. Get me out of here. Yvette Fielding is spending a terrifying evening with pop sensation McFly. She's challenged the boys to last the whole night in three of Northumbria's scariest locations. The band started the night in an old lead mine, where they had the living daylight scared out of them in the mine's tunnel. They've got... Before being subjected 
to a seance. Listen to that tapping. Oh. <sighs> if McFly think they've been hard done by so far, they'll have to think again as Yvette takes them to the second location of the night. Kilhope Woods sits on the unforgiving slopes of the North Pennines. It is said that people disappear here. There is a story of a woman who went looking for her missing husband in these woods only to go missing herself and never be seen again. It is said that her screams can still be heard. Hoping to hear more screams, this time from McFly, Yvette is leading the band to a derelict cottage deep in the heart of the forest. Now, I do happen to know that a group of paranormal investigators actually stayed the night. They're doing it for charity to investigate the cottage. What they were hearing was really loud screams. They were so terrified, they just ran. They didn't last the night. They didn't, they didn't finish doing the investigation. We've also been told that there is a spirit here of a man, very, very aggressive, doesn't like anybody being inside what could have been his, his house, his resting place. So, do you want to come and have a little look inside? Oh, no. <laughs> come on, let's go and have a little look. If everybody keeps their feet completely still, I'm just going to ask and see if we've got any, anybody here first. If there's anybody here, any spirit person, any spirit people that wish to communicate with us, please, can you give us a loud knock, a bang or a tap? Let us know that you're around, please. Oh, God. What the hell? A bit nervous. That's a loud thud, that wasn't it? There you go. Listen. It started. Listen. If you can hear my voice, can you knock twice, please? Did you hear that? That was two. Yeah. Mm. Okay. With the presence of the spirits yeah. being felt, Yvette decides to set McFly their next challenge. Okay. We've got two tents in the grounds. They're quite away from here. They're quite separated. Two of you are going to be in one tent, and one of you is going to be completely on your own. And one of you is going to spend some time on your own here. I would like Dougie and Tom to be in one tent. That's me. Right, Harry, you'll be on your own in the other tent. And Danny, I want you to be in here on your own. Oh, no. Why? Thank you so much. <laughs> Should we get ready then? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. Come on then. Come on, guys. Shit! Fly, fly, the devil's in your eyes, shoot, shoot. Leaving Danny alone in the cottage, the lads make their way to the tents. Yvette retreats to the edge of the forest from where she will blow the whistle that will release the boys from their terrifying vigils. Well, I'm standing out uh, quite away from the. Uh, the boys, it's absolutely tipping it with rain. It's pitch, pitch black here in the woods. I feel very sorry for, for the guys, even though I'm, a lot of people would say I'm evil. Particularly poor Danny, who's, who's on his own in that cottage, which to me is Blair Witch. I'm very open-minded about this trip, and I'm, I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm also going to be scared. I think I get scared in a, in a more dark and open space than a dark and smaller space. Because I know my barriers in a, in a small space, I think, that it's only there that I've got to watch, but in an open space and it's dark, you're like, ooh, it's a bit more freaky. I can't believe I'm staying on my own. What am I doing? Please be nice! Please! Oh, shit. I'm shitting it, absolutely shitting it. It's so dark and it's hard for Tom and Dougie, they get to go together, don't they? But no, me on my own, fucking in this place. But is there really safety in numbers for Dougie and Tom as they begin their terrifying test? Oh my God. That's probably dark, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad it's raining because like, that because um, of the noise of the rain, then we don't hear stuff. Unfortunately for Harry, he will have to listen to the sounds of the rain and whatever else might be out there. All on his own. 
I'm in a tent on my own and it's fucking pitch black outside and it's raining and all the raindrops kind of sound different so I think I'm hearing things but to stay calm. Hey, should we lay down? No. Should we sit further back in the tent? Then we just sit here and ride it out. <laughs> okay. Well this is quite a baptism into ghost hunting. I mean the, to, to put them in this position is, uh, is quite incredible. A lot of people would not do it so they're being incredibly brave. They really really are. I just literally cannot move. I really don't want to move out of this seat. I just don't know, I just don't know what the fuck to do. I'm starting to feel a bit weird. A bit lonely. I'm going mad, I'm speaking to a camera. It's absolutely crazy, there's a drip on my head. That just scared the shit out of me. There's a drip, a drip went on my head. Watching events unfold from the safety of the taxi is body language expert, Professor Geoffrey Beatty. Danny was the one they were expecting to do best. He went in there full of bravado and he's clearly one of the leaders of the group. But look at his behavior now. Look at the way he's rubbing his nose. And he's not just rubbing his nose, he's rubbing his cheek, every bit of his face. This is about self-comforting. Fear is leaking out of Danny. He's extremely apprehensive at this point. And Harry isn't doing much better. So being on your own is the fucking scary bit. And I'm kind of a bit too scared to ask out for spirits. Because I don't really want anything to happen. Despite their earlier scares, Tom and Dougie don't seem to be taking ghost hunting seriously. Best Disney film, what do you reckon? Like classic Disney with songs and stuff. Um. I don't know, they're all a bit kind of like wimpyish. Or is it just nerves? Dougie's non-verbal behaviour is really striking here. He's pulling his hair kind of from inside the hood of his jacket almost into his mouth. It's almost the kind of thing a child would do trying to suck the end of his hair. It's a very regressive form of behaviour. And what this is all about, it's about a form of self-comfort. I think it's a measure of how frightened he really is here. I'd much rather, I'm so glad I'm with you and you. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to do it with you. Oh, dude, imagine being in this tent on your own. This is fucking scary. Back at the cottage, Danny is also finding the going tough. There's a few noises, but I don't know. I don't know what to make out of them. A few drips. I don't know if the bangs. Don't know if the knocks. Who the fuck is that? Fuck Yvette is waiting on the edge of the woods. Only she can put the boys out of their misery. I'm going to give them about 15 minutes and then I'm going to blow the whistle. I just want them to experience something. We'll see. I don't really feel like talking much or moving much. I just want to sort of sit it out for as long as I can. Just waiting for that fucking whistle to blow. From the safety of the taxi, Professor Jeff Beatty is watching the fear unfold. What's interesting about Harry here is the tone of his voice. It's flat and really quiet. Fear takes people in quite different directions. Some people get really angry and the tone becomes louder and more changeable. 
other people kind of retreat into themselves, and that's exactly what Harry's doing. And it's about hanging on to reserves. He doesn't know what's coming next, so he's trying to keep something back for later. Despite Harry being given a tent all of his own, he finds he's missing the comforts of his rock and roll lifestyle. I just fucking want to be in a room in the hotel with the light, the TV on, with the guys. Because this is just not fun. Too frightened to call out for ghosts, Tom and Dougie find other distractions. Right, so anyway, yeah, I've got this game called In My Pants. <laughs> do you want to play it? Yeah, as long as I don't have to put my pants in your pants. All you have to do is, uh, you've got to think of, like, movie names and then say In My Pants afterwards, and if it's funny, then, you know, <laughs> kind of a point or whatever. Right, okay. So, like, die hard in my pants. <laughs> Absolutely crapping myself right now. If I was wearing a nappy, I would shit myself. Willy in my pants. <laughs> had a click. I'm just in a fucking tent in the middle of the woods. Anyone would shit themselves. Yes, the whistle. Massive whistle, that's a good shout. With the whistle sounding, Harry's quick to get out of the tent and back to safety. I just felt like I was in the Blair Witch Project. I can't, still can't see anything. <laughs> Shit. It's not until Tom and Dougie leave the tent that they actually admit to each other they were hearing strange noises. I, I was hearing stuff, but I didn't want to Yeah, I it. was as well. <laughs> I didn't want to freak you out. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, there's something there. So anyway, could you feel stuff? Ectoplasm. <laughs> I could feel stuff as well. Really? I could yeah. feel your head on my shoulder. I kept thinking, what the fuck's that, man? No, no, I could feel stuff, but I didn't want to freak, get you freaked out, and then you freaked me out even more. I could feel stuff like touching my foot. Really? And, like stuff throwing in, yeah. Oh, God. Deep in the woods, Danny's ordeal continues. He's so far away from Yvette that he hasn't heard her whistle. I feel like I can move now. My God, get me out of here. It's all too much for Danny, so he makes a break for freedom. Oh my God, I'm so happy, yes! Danny might be enjoying his freedom for now, but unfortunately for him and the rest of the boys, Yvette is taking them to the next and even scarier location. Coming up, Tom pleads for clemency. Can you maybe leave me and Dougie together? No. Please. Danny has a close encounter. Ah, what this? I feel something touching me, definitely. And Harry begins to believe. Are you okay? Yes, okay. There's a fucking ghost. Having braved the woods and kill Hope Mine. I'm absolutely crapping myself right now. <laughs> Yvette and McFly are en route to possibly the most terrifying location of the night. Set in the once lawless wild country that is the English-Scottish border, this castle dates back to the 13th century. 
This place has a very bloody history, being caught up in the countless skirmishes between England and Scotland. It has been laid siege to many times, and over the centuries its dungeons were prison for hordes of border raiders. As Yvette and the band make their way into this frightening fortress, they are met by Miranda Braithwaite, <laughs> whose family are the castle's present owners. Do you want to show us? Yeah. Come on, three. It's a magnificent house, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite old, it's about 800 years old. Eight and old. there's been a lot of different owners, but we're the last. And we've probably been here since about 1991. There's a lot of ghosts, there's an awful lot of history to this house. Outside in the taxi, Professor Geoffrey Beatty is monitoring the boy's initial reaction to the castle. This setting has a pretty formidable history. It looks comfortable in there, even homely in parts. But there has to be something behind all of that. You can see them kind of thinking to themselves, this all looks OK, but there has to be more to this castle than actually meets the eye. Moving on up through the castle, Yvette leads the band to a bedroom that was formerly a smoking room. The thing about this room is, and I'm sure Miranda will back me up on this, is that any guests that stay in here hate it. They don't like it at all, do not they? Not surprised. No. Why are you saying not, not surprised? It's quite spooky. You think it's a spooky room? <laughs> of course room? it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just said I feel quite comfortable. It's like my granny's uh, spare room, then she was like, no, you wouldn't. I was like, uh. all right, no. Well, <laughs> well this room, uh, uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but this room, when people stay in here, they'll lie on the bed and they'll be fast asleep and they'll feel this great weight pressing down on them and, and, and they'll be woken up. People don't like to sleep in here. They don't like the atmosphere no. at all, do they, Miranda? Not one no. bit. OK, and you never know. One of you could be sleeping in here later. Maybe if someone else was occupying the other bed, then... So possibly. you wouldn't do it on your own? Wouldn't like to, no. OK, all right, then. I'll should just... just keep quiet, really, shouldn't I? You should, really. Yeah. <laughs> should we call out? No, would you like me to call out? Yeah. Yeah? You don't want to do it? No. no. Still not confident enough to do it. All right, then. Let's see what happens. Everybody keep your feet still, just in case we hear some tapping. OK, what, what I'm trying to find is, I've been told as well, that we have a lady who's about 50, in her 50s, um, and she's sort of goes about her business in this room, likes to tuck people in, touch them, um, and, and the pushing down is actually the way in which she died. So she died from chest, uh, chest infection or complications with her breathing. And that's why you feel that heaviness on your chest. So she's here all the time in this room. So it'd be interesting to see if, if I call out if we get any knocking or any noises, yeah? All right. If there's anybody here, if there's a spirit of a lady here in the room, can you please make a noise? Can you please knock twice if you can hear me? The most dramatic thing here is how relaxed they're all looking until Yvette starts calling out. It's that kind of contrast from one moment to the next. They really don't like it when Yvette starts calling out. And I think it's because it exposes this core belief that they've got, which is that there's actually something out there and they really don't want to hear the response. If there's any spirit people here in this room now, in this building, can you please come forward and talk to us? Can you knock or make a noise? Can you make it louder, please? If you're here, knock twice, much louder. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. It's very gentle, isn't mm. it? Watching the social group here, you can see them mimicking each other's posture. Dougie and Harry are in exactly the same posture, their arms folded tightly across their chest. And Danny and Tom are in the same posture, their hands deep in their pocket, both looking down. Now, the reason human beings do that, it's a way of unconsciously signalling togetherness or rapport. They're pretty frightened there and they want to feel that someone's in the same position. How do you do that? You can stand next to someone, but if you're not next to someone, how else can you do it? You can adopt this, exactly the same posture because human beings are very sensitive to this kind of interpersonal mimicry. Do you mean us harm? No. That was one gentle rap. 
So hearing that, she doesn't mean you any harm. OK, well, let's, let's keep going. OK. The next port of call on this grand tour is the bathroom. But before Miranda can tell them about the ghostly goings on in here, Tom has a confession to make. You felt being what? Being pushed where? Uh, it was when we were in, in, the, uh, in the last room. In really... the smoking room? Yeah. Pushed where? Like, on sort of on my chest and my shoulders. It was quite hard as well, because I kept having to lean, I was leaning forward. I wasn't really listening to what everyone was saying, so I was concentrating <laughs> on standing up, because I was being pushed. <laughs> So it's like that, like trying to concentrate and not being pushed up. You don't think it was your imagination? No, that's right, because you said like about that woman, I was thinking, no, no, it's nothing, it's nothing. That's why I didn't want to say anything, so I thought it must just be me. And then, and then, so I just sort of, you know, tried to forget about it, and then it got like stronger, and I felt like I was being pushed back. And I was probably like having to lean forward. First rule about ghost hunting is if you feel anything or sense anything, say it I there know. and then. <laughs> don't wait for later on, OK? Was Tom touched by the spirit of the old lady, or might it have been the ghost of the old sea captain, Buccaneer William Smith? He owned the castle back in the early 1800s and is also believed to haunt these rooms. Do you want to tell us what's happened here? Yeah, well, basically, a friend of ours was having a bath and he was just sitting there, and suddenly he saw a man sitting in that chair, just that one there, just sitting, watching him whilst he was having a bath. <laughs> That's not so funny. It's a bit, bit of a pervert <laughs> kind of ghost. <laughs> Well, we think it's the Buccaneer, Buccaneer Smith. He's along the corridor, his presence is along the corridor, and also in the bathroom. And what did your friend do when he saw the guy sitting in the chair? I would have jumped out the window. He's never been back. <laughs> he's he's, never, been he's back. never come back. Can you hear the knocking already? Listen. If there's somebody here, please, can you knock? If there's a spirit person here, Buccaneer Smith, if you're here, can you knock, please? Please knock louder. Let us know that you're here. Two. Was it? Two. Two. It's definitely there, isn't it? Oh, can you hear knocking? it now? Can you hear it? Hmm. Can you knock twice, please, if you're a man? Is it Buccaneer Smith? Go on, I know you feel a Wally, but go on. <laughs> Smithy boy, how are you? Oh, oh, he's oh, no, he's not. Why is he not? He's just not right. What? He's just not back. Go on. Smith, how you doing, mate? Oh. Yeah, I'm good. Oh. Me too. Not bad, Harry. <laughs> so, do you mean us any harm? Do you mean us any harm? Knock twice for yes. Do you mean me any harm? <laughs> yeah. Two! Do you know what I love about you lot? Is you, you, when the lights are on, it's all so <laughs> <laughs> It's a great laugh. You'll all be crying in a bit. With Yvette's chilling promise ringing in their ears, McFly are taken to a chapel, which is home to, of all things, a Ouija board. I'm going to turn off the lights now. If there's anybody here, if there's any spirit people here that want to communicate with us now, please, can you talk to us? Can you knock? Make a noise? Throw something? Be aware of your hands, because I think there's something blowing on our hands. Oh, yeah. Can yeah, you feel yeah. it now? Yeah, I can feel it. And again, it's like something's going around blowing Yeah, I can. Oh, shit. Oh, God! I can feel it. Yeah, I can too. It's constantly blowing. Dude, I don't feel that. Yeah. If you're here, I know you're here. Please give us another sign. Can you knock? Hello? Can you come forward? Come into the centre of the table, please, and talk. Oh, God. 
Did you feel that? Yes. Please. Oh my god. You alright? Alright, dude. Dude. You alright? What are you feeling? I don't know. You alright? What, mate? I was really cute. <laughs> it's like, it like kind of blew really strongly on my, on my wrist. Yeah. I'm getting it on my hand. My yeah, hand's going so hand. cold. Oh, yeah. it's not doing it again. Mm -hmm. Did you do it the same time as you yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Can that, you feel I... it? Oh. oh, wow. It's going round. You didn't just blow my hand, did you? Oh, my God. No. <laughs> you just blow... <gasps> oh, my... Don't. There? Yeah, I can feel it. And again? Yeah. Yeah. You start to feel it, Harry. It's, yeah, I kind of feel it does it already. It's a strong glow, isn't it? It is strong. If that's you, thank you. Can you make it stronger? Whoa. Can you tap on the table? Are you ready to do the Ouija board now? Mm-hmm. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Keep one hand on the table, one hand on the glass, but don't put your elbow down. <coughs> Keep your hand up. If there's anybody here, please move the glass. Please. Dude, that was a knock over there. There was. Please move the glass. Let us know that you're really amongst us, that you're really here. Come on, move the glass. Oh, shit. Yvette's aggressive tone seems to have been met by an even more aggressive response from the spirit world. Did it? What the fuck was that? I have no idea. Oh, shit! Oh, that scared me to death, that did. Mm -hmm. What was it? It's a stone. Is it? It's really warm. Is it? No. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. Yeah. What do I do with the stone? Leave it there on the side. I'll throw it. I'll tell you what. Oh, OK. If you like to throw stones, I'm going to throw it. Can you throw it back? Throw it back. Move the glass. We want to know who you are. Come and play. Move this glass. Move it. Just give it a shove. Let, it, let us know that you're here. Oh, fuck. Coming up. Danny's chills are multiplying. <laughs> what? what happened? I felt something touched me, definitely. Tom is losing control. It's gonna be the start. Oh, it's fucking. I don't know if I can do it. And something goes bump in the dungeons. Fuck, Who's Mom. that there? Fuck! Fuck! Ghost hunter extraordinaire Yvette Fielding has set McFly the challenge of lasting a whole night in three of Northumbria's reputedly most haunted locations. Yvette has brought the band to a terrifying border castle where the ghosts of spirits lost are said to be present. It was while conducting a seance in the castle's chapel that one of these ghosts is believed to have made their presence felt. Come and play, move this glass. Let us know that you're here. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Did it get you? Shoulder, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't want to play with the glass, it wants to play with stones. Hoping to focus the spirit's energies on the Ouija board, Yvette decides to place the stone on the table. And put that under the glass. Oh, that's warm as well. Ready? Come and get this stone in the centre of the glass. No. Come and get the stone in the centre of the glass. If you're here, move this glass. Push the glass and the stone. If you like stones, come and get this one. Come on, you coward, whoever you are. Come and play. Oh, God. Come on. Oh, 
Was that one of you? Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. Was that one of you that moved the glass? No. By accident? No, That's a judder, then. Come on, move the glass some more. I know you're capable of doing it. If you want to switch hands, you can, uh, you know. Then we're off, we're off, we're off, we're off, we're off, we're off. Sure. <laughs> Come on. Keep going. All good. And that's better. <laughs> In the center. Just wait a second. I can't do it. Happy? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to continue? Yeah. <sighs> you alright? Do when, you want um, to ask when, a question? When that was moving, um, like I felt something on my neck. Did you? Yeah. It was like um, it was like there and then there. It was just quick. What like a touch or? Um, it was like a like um, like staggered. It was like. It was like... Oh, that's weird. I didn't... It wasn't like a force, it was just like a... Like, like a... As if something trickled past me. Like a tickle like, or... So, yeah. No, but it was like a weight. It was a weight thing. Oh, right. Like someone's hand going like that. It's me. Going like that. Yeah, or, or, or as if, like, um... I don't know, some sort of jagged object. Like, oh, right. A jagged object? Like well, I don't know. It kind of jerked. It okay. was like... Watching from the safety of the taxi outside is psychologist Professor Geoffrey Beatty. The boys are now in a state of absolute hypersensitivity. Danny thinks he's been touched by something. Now, what I think is going on here is that he's had a muscle twitch or his nerves have been twitching or something. This is something we'd ignore in everyday life. But here, because he's hypersensitive, he's picking up on the smallest thing and reading a big significance into it. Does somebody else want to ask a question? Are you a man? To know. Can you take the glass to where you're standing if you are indeed standing around the table? Oh no. You're standing here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> what did? I felt something touch me, definitely. Did you really? Definitely on my shoulder blade. I felt that sh I felt that shuddering again. Did and you? Then it was um. Oh my! That, that was weird. What, what does that mean then? That was weird. It was like, it was a gentle like, gentle on 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 my on my right shoulder blade here. Whoever it is likes you. Well, that's, and I'm just standing here still. Oh. <laughs> it could have been it could have been a muscle spasm. It could, but it was. It was like it was like as if they were checking checking my back like it was as if like it was like checking over my shoulder and then a little tap like a little like cautious tap. I think now it's time to finish here. Let's move on. Come on, I think we've done really well. Yeah. Happy to carry on? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Come Turn on. the lights on for a bit. <laughs> Absolutely not. Come on. Oh. Hoping to make the most of a possible spirit presence and McFly's growing terror, Yvette leads the boys down into the bowels of the fortress, its dungeons. It is said that this place is haunted by the ghost of Archie Armstrong, a border raider who imprisoned here was left without food to die in one of the cells. I can't see where I'm going. Just look through your viewfinder. Look through your camera. Right, you ready? Try not to bunch together so much, girls, ladies. Is there anybody here, any spirit person with us? Please come and talk to us. 
Come on in and just turn off your torches. Basically, there's a spirit in here of a gentleman who, who died in here, who's imprisoned in here. He'd done something wrong. But the owner of, of the property was allowed to imprison somebody, but only for short periods of time. And the, um, the prisoner was left in here, but the owner forgot about him, went off on a, on a journey, and the poor man was left in here to starve to death. Um, but he'd actually gnawed off his arm, part of his arm, to try and keep himself alive. But he was found dead in here. And he's supposed to be here, um, meet... There's a tummy, can you hear it? Yeah. If there's a gentleman here, if you're a prisoner here, please can you knock? Oh shit, that was a low knock. Just I hurt my ears, that did. Mm. Everybody keep still. If you're here, please can you make a noise? Please knock. If you were a prisoner here, when you starve to death, please make a noise. Throw something. Shut the door. Someone in that room. I did as well, and then I heard. Yeah, I did as well. Let's ask again. Let's ask again. Did you say what I heard? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I heard. Was that you who we heard? Yes. Well, speak again. Oh my God. Coming up, Yvette sets the final task. Guys, this is the last time that you're going to see each other. One by one, I'm going to take you somewhere. So, Danny, if you say goodbye to your friends. Tom takes it like a man. Can you maybe leave me and Dougie together? No. Please. And Harry reflects on his career to date. What were your highlights of being in the band? Oh, well, when uh, I got taken to fucking all the house. Pop Princess McFly are spending the night ghost hunting with Yvette Fielding. They've just been touring the very dark and dingy dungeons of a border castle where they had the living daylight scared out of them. Fuck that! Fuck that, dude! Fuck! That was fucking horrible. What was that? What was it? Convinced that there is a presence of a malevolent spirit lurking in the dungeons, Yvette takes the band to the castle's drawing room to reveal her last and cruelest challenge. Guys, this is the last time that you're going to see each other. All right? I'm going to take you off. One by one, I'm going to take you somewhere. So, Danny, if you want to come with me, say goodbye. Your friends. Oh, I don't know. Do you want to do it with me? No, we don't have a choice. Come on, Danny. Um, fuck that. Say goodbye. You're doing it with a vet? Are you staying with him the whole time? Come on, Danny, let's Yvette is taking each member of the band to rooms where they've already witnessed paranormal activity. She hopes that the ghosts here will reveal themselves to McFly one final time. Oh, 
no. Hey, I'm not full. She's not taking me somewhere and leaving me. No, no fucking way. Harry's response is actually pretty interesting here because he's been pretty good up to now. He's actually been on his own. Tom and Dougie haven't. So why is he saying what he's saying? Well, I think he's looking for one of two responses from the other two members of the group. Either he's looking for them all to bond together and say, look, none of us are doing this, and therefore doing something that is fair that way. Or he's trying to provoke a heightened fear response in Dougie, most likely, or Tom, people who haven't been on their own yet, so that he knows he's not the most vulnerable member of the group. And that's a way that some people have of dealing with fear. As long as they know that someone's even more friend than they are, it reassures them. So what I would expect to happen next is that Harry will continue this provocation. He wants to see the fear in the other two. That way, and only that way, he can feel better about himself. Did you hear that? Yes, you did. Tom, did you hear that? Yeah. It could have been a door shutting somewhere. Dude, fuck that, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not moving. No, dude, I can't do it, dude, I can't, I can't, I can't fucking do that shit, man. Just think that nothing's gonna happen. Are you gonna do it? I'm just gonna go see where she tries to take me and see what it's like. She's gonna take me last as well. Oh, mate, what if she takes me up? Oh, I don't know if I can do it. Dude, I don't know if I can do this shit, man. Okay. There's, there's no way she's taking me somewhere and leaving me there. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, any of the rooms, I think, of, even if she takes me up to that top, you know, that top room where I'm, I just thought... Well, she might... push you in the fucking cellar. Yeah, like in that dungeon on my own. I, I can't do it, I don't mean. Mate, okay. fuck that. I'm not going to any room. That's absolutely fascinating because Harry's unconscious goal here was not to be the weakest member of the group. That's why he kept asking them until he got the response he wanted. And what was the response he wanted? Not just that they weren't going to go along with it, what Yvette was going to ask them, but he wanted to hear the fear in their voices. He wanted to provoke an extreme fear response in his two best friends. Why did he want to do that? Because in human survival, you survive by not being the weakest member of the group, by knowing that someone else is even more scared than you are. And there was one bit of unconscious influence which was absolutely fascinating. At one point, Harry covers his face and it's kind of blocking out sensory information, at the same time self-comforting, and you'll notice that Tom did it as well. That's called interactional synchrony. It's a form of unconscious influence, and it was Harry's way of passing on his fear to Tom and Harry got exactly what he wanted out of that situation, which is he suddenly realized that there were two members of the group even more scared than he was. Meanwhile, in the dungeon... Shit. Danny, I need to stay here on your own. Fuck. You have this camera with you. I'll come and get you. Where, where are you going to be? I'm going to go up and get another member of the team and take them somewhere else. Fuck no. I can't make you. It's already knocking now. I know. If there's another one with me. Doesn't matter, you just call out. There's somebody here with you. Bring, if you bring another one down. No. One of the other guys. No. And then we'll say something, we'll no. ask them questions. No. I need you five seconds. Fuck. Okay. Time up, what are you doing? Oh, fuck. Go on, what are you doing? I'll try my best. Okay. Oh, fuck it out. With Danny entombed in the dungeons, Yvette returns to pick her next victim. What did you do with Danny? He's fine. Yeah. Did he want to do it? I can't answer any of those questions. Harry, it's your turn to come with me now. Come on, Harry. You're not leaving me on my own. It's Harry, just go and see where she wants to go. And see what it's like. For fuck's sake. Right. Should be a laugh. What were your highlights of being in the band? Ah, oh, well, when uh, I got taken into a fucking haunted house. 
With Tom and Dougie left to wallow in their own fear, Harry is led upstairs to the smoking room to confront his. You remember this room? Yeah. Okay, this is the smoking room. Do you remember? This is the room where there's the ghost of the lady who likes to push down on your chest when yeah, you're in yeah. bed. What I want you to do is on your own, lie on the bed. No, fuck that. So knocking. Well, listen. Fuck, you have seriously, a choice. I'm not. I'm... Listen, Harry, listen, you've got a choice. You either do this or you go and sit in the taxi with Jeffrey and watch what happens to everybody else. Can you hear that knocking? Yes, I can. What's a fucking ghost? Do you want to do it? I mean, yes or no? Give me, in five seconds, give me a yes or a no. Do you want to do it? Just wait. If it's... Oh, I have to hurry, I'm sorry. You have to give me an answer. Give me an answer, please, Harry. Seriously, I'll do it if it's just five fucking minutes, not 15 minutes. I won't do it for 15 minutes. OK, that's good enough for me. You go. I'm not fucking lying down. No. Seriously, is there someone outside? There will be. I will get uh, someone. Like, fucking right now, I will seriously. Get some, I will get somebody for you. Don't Seriously, worry. right yes, now. Yes, Steve will be out here. He'll know when to come and get Can you. Can you tell him to, to, to just say, Harry, I'm here, when, when he gets here, OK? okay. Bye, Harry. Bye. For Danny, he is in the dungeon. And he's absolutely scared rigid. Okay, I'm in a fucking room on my own. In this fucking scary house, and I'm shitting it. The fact that the boys have been split up is a really big issue for them. Danny and Harry are usually the two leaders of the group, and the group's kind of lost without them. Without his normal role, Danny's kind of reverted to this childlike state, and he's kind of transfixed by his own image in the video camera. And he's using it as a kind of tool to block out extraneous and frightening thoughts. This room is fucking scary. We were in here earlier, and... And Tom felt someone pushing his chest. It's kind of similar to like my granny's house in a way, but this just seems so much more scary. Fortunately for Danny, his time in Spirit Stir is over as one of the security team opens the doors and lets him go free. Right. Do you want to come out with me now and have a chat with Jeff? Yeah, fuck you right, I do. scary, eh? Go on. How was it? Don't uh, tell me what's happened. They, uh, they took me down to the dungeon on my own. And, um, and I, was try I was trying my best. I was like, you know, I'll try my best to say something, but I just couldn't bring myself to say it. Like, this is the same what happened in the barn, I just froze. Couldn't say because I didn't want I didn't want to hear the knock. If I had heard that, if I'd have, you know, I felt I felt I felt weird in there. I just didn't feel right. Back inside, Yvette is on the prowl. Okay, guys. Can you maybe leave me and Doggy together? No. Please. No. We'll give you tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Not just to our concerts, you know, we've got contacts. <laughs> Where did you put the other two? I'm not telling you. Oh, no, come on. Do they still have all their limbs? <laughs> she kind of looks like your mum. Yeah. Don't get cocky, guys. Yeah. His mum's hot. Oh, that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Tom, would you like to follow me? Yeah, I am. Come on. Say goodbye to Dougie. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, mate. Have a laugh.
coming up, Tom is led down into the dungeons. Stay here on your own. Last as long as you can. It's going to be this dark. Oh, it's fucked. I don't fucking do it. And Dougie throws a wobbler. No, oh, get fucked. There's no fucking way I'm going in there. Not, not, in, not in the, the place where the bloke bit his own arm off. Harry, Tom, Dougie and Danny of McFly fame have been spending the night with the queen of all things spooky, Yvette Fielding. She has taken them ghost hunting in deepest, darkest Northumbria. Excuse me, you're a bunch of rockers. <laughs> the band are at a very creepy border castle where Yvette set the guys their final task of the evening. Guys, this is the last time that you're going to see each other. One by one, I'm going to take you somewhere. So, Danny, if you say goodbye to your friends. Danny was forced to stay in the castle's haunted dungeon. Oh, fuck it out! Before running for the safety of the taxi and a reassuring word from Geoffrey Beatty. I felt, I felt, I felt weird in there. I still feel right. Yvette's next victim, Harry, is spending his time in a former smoking room where paranormal activity has already been witnessed. Seriously, I'd do it if it's just five fucking minutes, not 15 minutes. I won't do it for 15 minutes. Okay, that's good enough for me. You go. This room is fucking scary. Tom is Yvette's latest prey, and he is being taken down into the bowels of the castle. Oh, no. I don't know if I can do it. Oh, no. Is anyone else? No, Oh, this is... I can't... Oh, my God, this is horrible. Look how dark this is. Oh, no, fucking hell. I can't do it. I can't stay here. I can't stay here, seriously, guys. This is horrible. Oh, no, this room, come on. Seriously, this is where that fucking really loud moon thing was. I mean, that was horrible. You just followed me. Shut up! Shut up! I heard footsteps when I turned around. I thought someone was following me. This is fucking horrible. Shut up. Okay, right. Okay, here it is. You've got a choice. Okay. Stay here on your own. Yeah. Completely on your own. Last as long as you can. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go to the taxi. With Jeff. It's your choice. What did the other two do? I can't tell you. Oh no. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna be here on my own. Yeah, can you hear the tapping? Oh no, I don't, I don't, I don't fucking do it. I'm not forcing you to do it, I'm giving you a choice. It's gonna be this dark. Oh, it's fucking, I don't fucking do it. I don't, <laughs> I really want to, but I just get, I'm gonna absolutely shit my pants when you go. Are you gonna shut the door? Mm -hmm. Perhaps Tom's the biggest surprise of all because I think when he had Dougie to look after it, it gave him a certain, certain kind of false security. It gave him a role to play. And I think he felt comfortable in that. But now he's much more anxious about doing something on his own. With Dougie yet to learn his fate, this is the first time the band have been completely separated all night. I was literally just saying to Dougie and Tom, and if they try and put me in a room on my own, I'm just not going to do it, but I feel like you're here, so you might as well do it. Give you a guided tour of this room. There's a couple of beds, and there's a bookcase, and there's the camera, and there's this freaky kind of... Oh, fuck. Fucking hell. With the unexplainable noises clearly putting Harry on edge, he's doing very well to actually stay in the room. And as for Tom, well, he's still acting like a right big girl's blouse. I have to ask you, I'm going to give you five seconds and I want you to tell me what Oh, I'm no. Oh, no. Oh, my God, I can hear it. It's yeah. literally, when I touch this wall, that literally like came from here in this corner. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I, was, I, knew, I was about to say yes then, and then I had that. Come. What do you want to do? Um. I don't know if I can do it. I'm going to go to the taxi. You're going to go to the taxi. Come on, then follow us. With Tom taking the easy option and the safety of the cab, Yvette returns to release Harry. Yeah? Harry? Yeah? Please? How was it? Um, for a while I was just quite scared. I was just literally standing here. My whole body just went numb. But, yeah, I mean... Well, well done. It's good. over. Good. Thank God for that. Back to the taxi for you. Well good. done. Outside in the taxi, Tom is just relieved to be with someone other than Yvette. I just didn't want to sit on my own in the dark. <laughs> it was just... That's scary enough, isn't it? Where did they take mate, you? you? You know when you said, mate, they took me to that dungeon down, you know where that guy died? I, f I went in there and there was knocking straight away. Yeah, as, as, we, as we all went. I nearly, I was like, I was like, I nearly was about to say, all right, she rushed me in and I was about to say, all right, I'll do it. And just as I was about to say it, it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I thought, if I'm in here on my own, Problem I'm just going to shit myself. I found that more scary than the mine stuff. Um, I don't know, just because the fact that it was a house and it's yes. like eight, 800 years old and yeah. it's just got so much history. And but you, you were adamant you, you weren't going to be separated. Tonight. I know. So, <laughs> so tell me what happened next. Well, when they were asking me, like, are you going to do it in the room, I was going, um, they said, are you going to stay here? There was the, there was like tapping in the room. And I was just going, yeah. and I went, no, can you hear that tapping? And they're like, yes, are you going to stay here? I was like, can you hear that? It's a fucking ghost in here. <laughs> and uh, and then I was just like, oh, sod it. So I did it. And then with Danny, Tom, and Harry safe in the taxi, it leaves Dougie all alone in the castle, apart from some ghosts, and of course, Yvette. Hi, Steve. Hi. How are you doing? Not bad. Yeah. 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 Okay, come on. Let's go. Again, Yvette heads for the dungeons and the ghost of Archie Armstrong. No, oh, get fucked. There's no fucking way I'm going in there, man. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. It's all right, come on in. No, no, hell no. There's no, no way I'm going back in there. You don't want to go in not, here? Not in, not in the, the place where the bloke bit his own arm off. You don't want to go there? No, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, that's it, I give up. I, 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 I said, I'm the biggest pussy here. I give up. Fuck it, I can't do it. I can't, I can't stand this play. Yeah, absolutely sure. Yeah, yeah. I can't convince you. No, and there's not, there's the hell, they're not coming in there. I'm okay. so sorry, I can't, I can't do it. Okay, no problem. Back to the taxi then. Yes, yes. Okay. That's the end yes. for you. Good, good. You finished. Thanks. You're happy to leave. Yeah. It's... You guys are mental. Oh! How's <laughs> <laughs> it been for you? Oh, I was alright. Oh, I've hated every minute of it. I'm sure Dougie and Tom are mentally scarred from this, which is great, and I'm going to wind them up. And uh, it's been uh, very scary, which is good. I love stuff like that. I love being uh, being scared, and, and it's uh, I've been uh, been quite fulfilled by this trip. I think uh, uh, it's probably been the most scary night in my life ever. I, w I really was shitting myself the whole night. The mind sucked. It really was the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> I can't even believe we stayed down there. You know, we're all holding on to each other in the pitch black, walking around with these cameras, and it's it's really scary. But it's also quite exciting, you know. This was the spookiest night of my life. I hated every second of it. So thanks, guys. Cheers.
It's been a really interesting night because what fear has done, of course, is reveal the underlying characters and personalities and belief systems of these four very close friends. Dougie was a believer from the start and in some sense his fear trajectory was spelled out right at the beginning. And he stuck true to course all the way through it. Fuck it, that's it, that's it, I'm fucking out of here, man. Dude, dude, no, 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 fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Dougie, stay, don't run. No, fuck, fuck, man, I lost my hat and everything, dude. Tom, of course, got a lot of his strength from looking out from Dougie. But what was interesting was when that role position was removed from him, suddenly he didn't look quite so confident anymore. Oh, no, I don't know if I can do it. Harry was really interesting because I think he is the kind of evolutionary, the based individual in the group. He didn't want to be the weakest member of the group. He wanted to know other people would crack before he did. Fuck, she's going to take me last. And Danny's character, of course, was an interesting one. Very funny, very outgoing. It drove him to do things that perhaps he wasn't quite prepared for. And when he got into those situations, it was all about closing down the sensory information coming in. That was his way of dealing with fear. Oh, fucking hell! But the dynamics of the group were also really interesting because these are four guys who know each other really well. A group who were very coherent at the beginning, suddenly became much more individualistic, much more interested in their own individual survival. In some sense, it's much more selfish, but that's human beings for you. I'm quite glad it didn't have an hasn't had an effect on me afterwards. Yeah, hopefully it won't, you know. I'd love to do it again, yeah, I think I would, definitely. Only if the, uh, not my own, only if the other guys do it. Really. I'd definitely do it again, definitely. Love to see a vet again as well. No, there's no way I'd ever do this again. Sod that. Looking for ghosts. Yeah. The book is now closed on ghost hunting with McFly. Or is it?